Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Today I visit with David Arnold from Washington, Missouri. I'm Rick J, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. Rick J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Well, Mr. Arnold, welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm truly really excited to turn the spotlight on you today. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm honored that you uh, chose me. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'm looking forward to it and sharing your story with some of the most amazing art in the state of Missouri, as far as I'm concerned. Well, this is your first visit with me here on Spotlight on the Arts, and I've been looking forward to it since we met at a, a grand opening, a reopening, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. for the Room of Art Gallery yes. in Washington, Missouri, a few months ago. Well, David, I'd really like to start out uh, by calling you by your first name, if I may. Absolutely. Okay. Well, if you would, would you share with us, uh, the viewers, a little bit about David Arnold? Well, I am a native of Missouri. Uh, my ancestors go way back to the beginning of the creation of this state and the beginning of St. Louis. And uh, my ancestors have been here that long. And I am a true fan of the state of Missouri. I think it is a an amazing place to live. Uh, I love all four seasons um, and I just think that Missouri has some of the, the best scenery in, in America. And that shows in your paintings. Now, can you share with the people worldwide, they're always studying about the, the great uh, America. Can you tell us who that out of St. Louis area, Lafayette, maybe, uh, your ancestry? They came up with uh, Chaudot and Laclede to start the city of St. Louis. They were one of the first 30 families um, to start St. Louis. They came out of St. Genevieve, and previous to that, they migrated from Kaskaskia, Illinois. Oh, I see. Great, great, great. Now, you have a family. Would you like to tell us a little bit about family? You have a, a sweet wife. I've got to marry you today. I, I do, Jane. She's, we've been married for 45 years. We have three kids and uh, eight grandkids. Uh -huh. I see. Now, did you, um, uh, let's see, your your background, what, what kind of work did you do these, uh, uh, you're retired now? I'm retired now. I, I started off in graphic design. Uh, I worked for Christian Hospitals, was my first job. And uh, from there I moved on to uh, working for the publication uh, division of uh, Grace Church in St. Louis. Worked there for, I guess, five years and then... Uh, moved on to various uh, ad agencies, marketing firms. Um, and then at one point, I just got tired of working on computers and happened to see a, um, a newspaper ad uh, for a, an illustrator uh, saying that they did things the old way by hand. And I thought, I am ready for this. So I applied and that was uh, uh, for a job with uh, Mary Ingwright Studios. And I became an in-house illustrator for her Worked there for about 12 years uh, before leaving um, that company. At the time, my wife and I had a, an art gallery and a custom frame shop on Main Street here in Washington. In the great uh, city of Washington, uh, yep. the city of artists, uh, Ron Frankel, uh, Gary Lucy, uh, Mr. Brian Haynes, I believe it is. Yes. And yeah. on down the line, it's just full. It's a great place to visit. If you're into art, it's right on the Missouri River. I'm just, uh, I'm, what are we, about three blocks from the Missouri River? Yes, we are. It's great that uh, we're sharing this in the studio, in the home uh, here in Washington, Missouri. Well now, education. They, uh, you know, people try to study art. Uh, were you educated somewhat? You know, I, uh, I'm a graduate of Florissant Valley Community College. I started off in fine art and decided real quick that if I was going to support myself, I needed to um, 
changed into something that I could make money sooner. So that's when I moved into the graphic design department there and uh, left there. And my first job was at Christian Hospitals, uh, which wasn't far from the, the campus. And that's worked there for several years and then uh, went out on my own for a few years and then was asked uh, by Grace Church to join their marketing team. Well, what really then became, the first time you, she would say, was inspired to become an artist at four years old? Five oh years. gosh, it was very, very early. Um, I remember my older sisters uh, would have me um, do any of their homework that uh, uh, necessitated uh, an illustration or a drawing. Um, so I would do that for them and then just, you know, in school that was the class I liked and the best. And what age was that? Oh gosh, I had seven maybe, seven or eight. Okay. So you're like one myself, I was the, that, uh, that whatever grade I was in, I was the one that was always called on to do the, the artwork on the book. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can identify with that. I but, sure can, yeah. Well, now, what continues now at Retired? giving you time naturally maybe to do your artwork mm -hmm. what continues to you to ins uh, inspire you to continue your artwork well uh you know being in the graphics graphic design and marketing field there there wasn't a whole lot of time to actually illustrate or paint um and you know after you've worked eight hours a day it, it was hard to come home and and actually want to paint it used to drive my wife nuts that I wouldn't spend my evenings painting. So, so when I retired, I, you know, for 12 years when I worked for Mary Inglebright, amazing experience. We, there was a, just a, an, a wonderful, talented group of artists, core artists there that worked. You know, Mary would start an illustration and pass it off to one of us to finish, or we would have to take one of her um, images and redesign it and revamp it for a different object. Uh, most of what we pulled from were card art and calendar art and then have to turn it into uh, something uh, that would go around a mug or I see. Uh -huh. all sorts of different things. Oh, okay. But it was a great time of collaboration and working with other artists and um, you know just getting the hands on. So at least I was able to keep, keep a, a, a good grasp on the creative process. Right. Well, Dave, your artwork speaks well for you. And uh, you've been viewing some of David's artwork as we were chatting. We're going to take you uh, in more in depth into his artwork in the second part of the show. So I want everyone to stay tuned for that. Uh, again, uh, as they say, his artwork speaks well for him, as you see here with the uh, wild turkeys of Missouri. And we'll, we'll be, uh, again, sharing a lot of his artwork with you uh, as we continue through the interview and program. Um, well, let's see, David, I guess we should think about um, uh, getting your contact information. I'm sure you'd like to, to do uh, some, uh, some work for other people uh, on a commission basis or what have you. Uh, can you give us your contact information, your best shot to getting a hold of you? Well... It, the best way to do it is just to contact uh, Room for Art Gallery. Um, I'll do things through her. Um. Okay, so that's Room for Art Gallery. We'll put this on the timeline also. Room for Art Gallery here in Washington, Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Versus, it's Joanne McCoy. Oh, Joanne yeah. McCoy, uh, who runs the shop. Yeah. Who is the daughter of a well-known artist named Jim Peters? Absolutely, so that will help you that connection. I'm fortunate to be part of that, where I do exhibit also at that location. Well, you have some magnificent paintings uh, and artwork there at the uh, Room for Art, so that's a good, uh, a good contact. Okay, super. Well, David, we must take a break. So please make yourself comfortable while we look at these special messages. Okay. Well, after the break, David will fill us in on his favorite subject matter, materials used, and a special way of completing a, a work project uh, with any special techniques maybe added that he might use that he would like to share with you. There's much more here on Spotlight on the Arts, so 
Stay with us. Creative, connection, control. Support the arts and be the change. 24 hours a day, 200 countries. The show must go on. Introducing the world's first exclusive platform for artists and creators of all kinds. The biggest stage on earth. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire.tv, or Apple.tv. Hi, I'm Rick J. And I'm Jeffrey Pernal. And we're here to introduce you to GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Hope you'll tune in. Tune in and watch all your great shows by independent producers, music, and film, and podcast. Roku, Apple TV. Amazon Fire TV and or Google it on GIJ Global Media Network. It's a free download now. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to Spotlight on the Arts. I continue with my special guest, artist David Arnold of Washington, Missouri. Well, welcome back, David. Good to be back. Yes. You know, before the break, we shared a lot of information. Uh, so let's continue along those lines of thought and expression. And I'd like to ask you, if you would, please describe your type of art and how that came about uh, with all of your skills. and and over the years considered? Um, I, what I, I primarily work in um, watercolor uh, and colored pencil. Uh, it's, sometimes I'll throw pastels in. Um, I, I, where I first started was black and white. Uh, I've always been drawn to black and white. And uh, Kohenor used to make this wonderful black pencil they called the Negro pencil. And uh, Man, I got a box of those and took off. I used to draw on butcher paper because that's all we could afford. And I had a roll of it. So, I mean, I would... First subject matters that I did were, were Native Americans. Um, and I got interested in that through stories from my grandmother of uh, her uh, Native American heritage. And um, it just kind of picked an interest. So... Um, I ran across a, a book of photographs by Edward Sheriff Curtis, who was a phenomenal photographer. And uh, once I saw some of his images, I thought, you know, I've got to draw these. So I started copying uh, his photographs and uh, I would sell them. Uh, and for, you know, I guess I must have been 17, 18. And um, I remember taking a roll of them or a whole series of them, of them with a friend of mine down to... Uh, Florida and stopping in Cherokee, Tennessee and selling a lot of them to the uh, Indians on the reservation there who had storefronts and stuff. I would basically go in and, you know, show them, and, you know, I think I might have got 15 bucks, 20 bucks a piece for them. Um, but it gave me enough money to finish the trip and head back home. And Excellent, excellent. 
So that um, kind of, and where are you today? Uh, today, it's, uh, your subject matter. What what is your favorite subject matter? You know, most of my work is representational, so I like uh, painting things that you can recognize and and see. Um, I would say most of my stuff is. I, I've been getting into wildlife lately, and uh, also illustrating uh, botanical type pieces. Um, and you'll be seeing some, I guess, flipped on the screen as we're talking. Um, yeah. Well, how do you um, how do you take us through the process of completing a paint, painting? Uh, do you begin with a sketch, photograph, sketch, multiple sketches? Usually, I start off with photography. I mean, I'll purposely go out and shoot the images that I want to uh, photograph if I can. Like with these turkeys, I, I used it, uh, different photographers' images and took several and put them together in order to get this this particular piece. But um, I like working for my own photographs. And then, it, then it's just a matter of doing a quick sketch on the board and then apply paint. I, don't, I rarely do studies first off. I, I, I know a lot of people do, and I probably would have a much easier time uh, getting through a painting but uh, I, I learn it as I'm painting. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, if I may, is there one technique or process that you'd like to share with the viewers worldwide? What would that be? One, one is uh, using a limited palette. Um, I, when I first got into watercolor, I took a, um, a weekend seminar with a, a watercolor artist by the name of Jerry Ellis. I think he's in Missouri. Um, and he used, I think we, six colors and, um, they, they all work well together and don't, uh, they don't fight with each other and they don't clash with each other. And I've been using those six colors ever since. So that's, that's gotta be 30 years ago at least. Um, I agree with that. That's the way I was taught. To take your basic six colors, make your blacks, make your darks, mm -hmm. make your greens, make whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that really then becomes, in a painting, it seems to be more balanced. Yeah. It doesn't seem like I give a spotlight all of a sudden, uh, an eye on a turkey. For, <laughs> it's not looking like a green light go, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I, uh, that's great to hear that you yeah. uh, like more, I think, more of your professional Masters uh, have always used that yeah. a good small palette. Yes. Um, well, um, we have favorites, and I'm sure you do. Would you like to share some of those favorites with us? Well, you know, one of my favorites is a black and white drawing that I did uh, of uh, Nick Demas, uh, a Jewish rabbi. It, it, there was a movie that came out, I guess, in the late '70s called uh, Jesus of Nazareth. An absolutely beautifully filmed uh, movie. I think Franco Zeffirelli was the um, director in that that movie. And um, but there was a book that they put out on it, and there was just this image of this Jewish rabbi in there. That and um, gosh, I, I, I can't tell you how many prints of it I've sold. Um, so that touches your heart, that one. Yeah, um, huh? because I, I think you know when you use a photograph. Um, they're great, but photographs can only go so far. It's up to us as artists to kind of add the spirit to them and, and give them that, that light that, that touches people. Um, and so that's what I try to do in, in most of what I do, um, whether it's a person or uh, flowers or turkeys. Um, um, and do you have a second favorite? Second favorite? I, I did... My wife and I went on a trip to Italy uh, in 2000, I think 14, with some dear friends of ours, and I was fascinated by all the doors in these small towns. So I took a, a bunch of photos of a bunch of doors, and I, I wanted to do a series uh, of paintings based on these doors. I've got one done, and that's, that's one of my favorites. Oh, I see. Um, and a third? A third. Oh, you know, I, I did a portraits. I did portraits of each one of my kids. I, those uh, I've always um, 
favored. Um, they've always been favored, simply, I guess, because of the subject matter. I see, I see. Well, excellent. There we go. Well, David, we're about to run out of time, so do you have any closing words you'd like to pass on to the viewers? Maybe a personal message for those beginning artists, uh, for those uh, in the art communities worldwide. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know how long ago, I ran across a quote that said, comparison is the death of creativity. Uh, so as artists, we, we can't really compare ourselves to other artists. Or we can't compare our work to their work because we're different. We both, we all have different voices. And if you keep comparing your work to theirs, it tends to stifle our own creative spirit. Um, so I, that's one thing I've tried to do. I mean, I have a lot of uh, favorite artists in uh, a lot of contemporaries, especially here in town in Washington. There are some just phenomenal artists. Yes. Um, Gary Lucy, who's just does some masterful oils, and um, Brian Haynes, who I I love his work. I have one piece of his, um, but they inspire me, and it, it, I try not to compare my work to theirs because we're completely different. Um, but I just let other people's work inspire me to keep working and doing what I do. Well, you referred earlier to, at lunchtime, uh, to a gentleman named Ron Ferkel. Absolutely, one of my total favorite artists. Um, I've known Ron for, gosh, I want to say close to 30 years, and I don't think I've ever seen anybody master the, the art of brushwork better than Ron. Uh, he's just one of those um, unknown uh, geniuses. Well, I want to thank you once again for contributing to the Spotlight on the Arts. It's been really an inspiring uh, visit with you. And it's been really informational and educational experience, I'm sure, for everyone. So thank you again, David. Well, Thanks for having me. Well, that wraps up another look at an inspiring artist here on Spotlight in the Arts. Thank you, viewers, for joining me here today. I'm Rick J. saying stay healthy and safe. Don't forget to subscribe to GIJ, Global Media OTT Network, the streaming network where you'll see more than 180 artist interviews of all types of artists. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.